it paid off. I got best lifter in my weight class overall and ended up going six for six, smoked my lifts, matching my yeah, buddy. deadlift PRs from when I was, you know, 50, 60, 70 pounds heavier. And I actually ended up squeezing out a deadlift PR on my third attempt from uh, when I was last competing at my heaviest. What's cracking Skull Bells TV? Coach Mike and I just got done checking in after his first keto powerlifting meet, which was the Iron Asylum meet in New York. Full disclaimer, this is the first powerlifter that I have ever coached, and so I actually had to start off by asking him just some basic powerlifting questions to hear how everything went. So I hope that you learned something. I hope that you enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Mike. Yeah, so thankfully for this, it was like 24 hour weigh-in, so I don't have to worry about that stress, but it started at eight where they went over all the rules and regulations and all the commands and what you can wear and not wear. And then people just, then they got the show rolling, people were warming up for everything and it's just a whole atmosphere, like a whole vibe. Like everyone's just chill and down to earth and super friendly and supportive of everyone. And yeah, it went from eight o'clock and then it ended up ending around three or 3.30. So it was like a full workday type of deal where it just went on all day. And it's like a whole, <clears throat> I forgot the kind of beast it is when you have to kind of channel that adrenaline multiple times throughout the day. Like I was just exhausted at the end of the day, like, cause you're basically going for like anywhere from six to nine, one rep maxes. Cause you get three attempts for each lift. And you gotta like, you gotta get that fight or flight going to get under like the heavy weight, the maximal load. And you gotta be able to perform on command and channel it and get on a platform in front of, you know, 40 to 70 people, whoever's in attendance watching for the people competing, and it's just a big rush. And it's like that dip, that high and low, I was just exhausted by the end of the day. Like I was just shot, my CNS, like my body was just, I got home, laid in my recliner and just like died. Like I just like fell asleep and was just zonked out. <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was, there, was, there any, was there any of a carb crash that had anything to do with it maybe? It could have been, cause yeah, I hadn't really had any carbs, but prior to what we talked about, I was doing some of like the gummy bears for just like the quick candle burning carbs just to fill my mouth, you know, the joints and the muscles and give me the best leverages we possibly could. And I think that might have had something to do with it because I was feeling weird. <laughs> like I was just like feeling it in my head and it was just like, like I felt like I was almost high, almost like a high. Like I was just like, yeah. Um, okay, but so you felt weird but in a good off. way. It paid off. I got best lifter in my weight class overall and ended up going six for six smoked my lifts matching my yeah buddy deadlift prs from when i was you know 50 60 70 pounds heavier and i actually ended up squeezing out a deadlift pr on my third attempt from uh when i was last competing at my heaviest so i've lost all this weight and i've gotten stronger what what, what, did, what did you pull i ended up pulling 505 for my third attempt and Wow. I was pissed because I could have done more. Like looking back at the videos and just how I was feeling that day with the adrenaline and just I could have I probably could have pulled like five fifty on the day. Like honestly, that's how well it moved. But Jeez. I wanted to. So, I, I uh, up, up. And up, uh, here, here again, you're here, here, here again. You and I, um, I did, I did your diet all the way through this, right? But yeah. I'm a bodybuilder, not a not a power not a power lifter, and so you got to dumb it down for me a little bit. And so you had you had you had a belt, you had no belt, you had straps, no straps. Uh, you can wear a belt, but you can't use wrist straps for your grip. So it was you could either do like a hook grip, double overhand hook grip, or like a mixed grip, but no straps. Um, no, there was some of the people were doing like knee wraps, which I did not. But you, yeah, just a belt and raw, just belt and your grip pulling it up and just like with bench too you can use like wow. your strap but um yeah no elbow sleeves or anything like that for the benching so yeah strapless over under grip pulled 505 for my third attempt and it moved so well i was pissed i could have done more but <laughs> i wanted to play it safe and just end <laughs> the day on a six for six smoke it just on the board just clean reps for the first time ever because every time i compete in the past I've always like shot my shot and blew my load and I would always like get red lights or just like bomb out. So this was the first meet too, where I've actually got all white lights for all attempts, six, you know, and everything that I did. So it was like, it was a perfect meet, quote unquote, is what we would call that. Like it was just a perfect meet. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. 
congratulations again, man. Um, Thank you. Definitely, don't, definitely, d definitely, you wouldn't have wanted to blow your load too. That would have been really embarrassing. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, what was the what was the vibe of the of the meet backstage, man, and like in the, the atmosphere there? So, like, the reason I ask is because uh, I, I've I've uh, competed in and coached through a lot of comp uh, a lot of uh, NPC shows. And then a lot of natural drug tested shows and they're not even close to the same thing right it's a just a different type of atmosphere um i don't believe that ne that one's necessarily better and one is necessarily worse both of them are really really cool environments um mm. but they're they're very very different there's um there's 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 more of a like a business um competitive atmosphere i feel um, and this is what all my clients say. It's the same thing um, in NPC events where there's typically not drug testing. Sometimes there is um, versus the natural federations where everybody is there because they're passionate about health. They're passionate about fitness. And yes, you see the same thing in uh, bodybuilding where enhancements are allowed. And yes, you see you see very, very extremely competitive uh, competitions within natural bodybuilding federations, right? And so there's definitely a mixture of the two to both of them. But like, what's it like at a powerlifting man? Like, why are mo why are most people there? Oh, it's just, it's so supportive. Like, it's such a good vibe. Like, there are people who I didn't even know who were fist bumping me and cheering me on and just like giving me good vibes. Like, good uh, good luck out there. Get out there and kill it. Or damn, that was so that was nice lift. That was impressive. Holy shit! Like, that was a lot of weight for your body weight. Like, just super, super supportive, and people were in the back, like, spotting me, who I've never met in my entire life. They were just, like, helping me with the commands and spotting me. So it's just super friendly, super – everyone's just there to see everyone succeed. I mean, this is a local meet. I've never been to, like, a larger kind of more competitive meet where I'm sure it might be more cutthroat where people are trying to win their weight class and win world titles and stuff like that. But this, for, like, a local meet, was very supportive, very good crew. That's That's awesome. Um, what did it feel like being the only keto guy there? Like, were you like the black sheep or what? Well, I'm assuming you were the only keto there. It's just not very, it's not, I, I was, I was, ta I was talking to, uh, I was, I was talking, um, I was talking to a guy in the locker room at my gym here that I train at one of uh, the two, the, like two times a week that I train at the gym and not home. And he's a power lifter. And so I was telling him about you, obviously I was like, yeah, man, I got my first power lifter competing today. And so this is how we did his peak week. We did it. I did, did it just, you know, just like how I do all my, uh, my, my keto bodybuilders and everything. And so I was kind of asking him what, uh, what his thoughts were on it. And he, and, and, and he had just like never, ever heard of one ketogenic power lifter in his entire life. Like that, 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 that was even a thing. And so I'm just curious, like, is that, um, what, what, what did other people have to say about like what your diet strategy was going in? Um, a lot, I, I, I talked to like a few people who were asking me or who I was like kind of talking to and just like, and I would honestly say I, a couple people thought I was lying, like that there's no way that I went through like a keto prep for a powerlifting meet. But and then other people were actually, <laughs> I, I did have one guy who was actually seemed interested. He was like picking my brain and I, I actually turned my phone to Google Drive. I pulled up how we went about the meal plan and the, the peak and just how we tailored, tapered the macros and did the refeeds and stuff like that. But you know, it was kind of funny where I either got accused of running tests or people just didn't believe me when I told them I, I went through a full, full prep <laughs> on a ketogenic diet. And yeah, I don't know. Like I guess like, people are just like, you need carbohydrates to fuel that power and the one and the strength and I was just like I mean I'm standing here telling you I didn't <laughs> <laughs> flat out did not believe you Acc accused you of lying I've never ever gotten that res response before um, yeah when uh, you, you should have seen the look on this guy's face because it was just it was just like the, just the fact that you didn't eat any carbs throughout your entire peak week until I mean, through your entire prep, your entire really the entire year for the past six months, you haven't had any carbs. You haven't had more than thirty grams of carbs a day, probably, except for yeah. the night of the show. But I mean, but of, of the of the meat. But other than that, you've been pretty much zero carb the entire year, haven't you? Yeah, since January when I kind yeah. of started that World Carnivore Month and then reached out to you. Yeah. So the first, so the first sugar that you really even had was literally right before you was literally right before you lifted. And so the reason that you and I decided to do that was because um, it's going to make you retain water. It's going to make, it's going to give you a little more leverage. And so 
did that work, yeah. man? Like, did it feel like like I I know I know that it messed with your head because like I don't know, man. Like if I ate a if, seriously, if I ate a if, if I ate a bag of gummy worms, I would be I would be weird. I would like I would I would know who I am for like probably for yeah. like, probably you know I don't know. I haven't I haven't had sugar in years, right? And so yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I thought that was kind of ballsy that, that I, I thought that was kind of ballsy that you went off that you went off diet first of all. Um, but yeah. just like out of out of the chance that it was that it was probably going to give you more leverage, and I'm just like thrilled that it worked, man. So like, yeah. what was going what was going through your head, dude? Like, did like did you did you feel weird? Did you feel like you were going to throw up? Did you feel like, oh my god, I feel ten times stronger now because everybody else says that I should have been eating carbs the entire time? <laughs> I I would say I definitely I don't know if it was placebo, but I definitely felt like more stable. I guess like I don't know if it was like the water filling up and like the water retention. Like I just felt like more. <laughs> Like probably a lot of it was the blow. Like I did, like that blow just kind of helped me fill out my belt a bit more, and just I felt more secure. Like bringing the bar out for the bench, like. But I, I wouldn't say I felt like ten times stronger. If anything, just slightly more stable, and just that extra water retention helped me feel a little more stable and secure under those heavy loads. But I definitely felt weird. Like I felt like I was actually like high, like on marijuana high. Like I just like felt it in my head, <laughs> all like up in here people who are listening can't see but like up in there like i just felt it and it, i was just i remember saying to the people from my gym who came i was like i feel like i'm on, i feel like i feel weird like i just feel like a different person right now <laughs> so that those were the only notable changes i would say cool just to clarify you were lifting sober you were not stoned at the meet correct correct yes yeah <laughs> just double checking okay um, so your macros are 165 and what so your macros coming into the meet were 140 um 140 protein and 100 fat and you weigh how much right now as of this morning i weigh 172 after the weekend and just everything said and done so i ended up weighing in 164.4 so i made weight and then after everything was all said and done it kind of shot back up a little bit but that was just because of we went out to celebrate and i was you know but yep. and then it's kind of tapering back down so yeah awesome so that yeah that 140 protein that was kind of rock bottom as far as your lean body mass is concerned and then your carbs were going to keep it at 20 or below obviously because you're just eating some like uh trace keto bricks here and there and maybe like some sour cream and then your fats got as low as 100 we bumped all that up on friday to fill you out and give you a refeed by 30 percent. so your friday macros were 185 and then 20 and then 150 for your fat and then now you're so then now that brings us back to the reverse diet. So we're just a little bit higher than where you were going into the show, but not quite as high as you were on your refeed. So like basically midway in between the two. So we're gonna do uh, 165 protein, 20 carbs, and 125 fat. And then you got um, 185, 20, and then 135. And then that'll basically bring you back up to kind of where your maintenance is at towards the end of June. So then your next and so our entire goal is to keep you right at that body weight and so we'll get you that's the way yeah. lifter in your class again <laughs> when's your next yeah. beat? october 26th is going to be the next one that's the beast of new york october 26th awesome yeah. man that'd be cool if i could make it out do they offer a uh, do, do, do they do like uh guest posers or ever ever hire guest posers to come in i'll come in and flex for everybody <laughs> <laughs> i know it's not a body building show do it during the uh the inner the intermissions between uh lifting between squat bench and deadlift get in do some posing <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, for sure man. um what was your what, what what was what was your like your biggest oh crap moment like your like, biggest thing that you were worried about going into this show um uh, biggest thing that went wrong was there anything definitely like i was worried strange. about my deadlifting because no injuries uh no injuries um i think I would I would kind of get some back to, you know some my lower back would kind of act up here and there but I wouldn't call it an injury I think that was just due to relearning my body's leverages under the squat and deadlifting just from the weight dropping but my deadlift I was worried about I remember talking to people that my confidence was down in deadlifts because I could barely pull 455 475 in my prep my grip would give out and I just felt unstable but as I said earlier on game day like I ripped up 505 and I probably could have done even more. So between that refeed and just my CNS recovering and just everything we did, I think just must have paid off. Yeah. Good stuff. So awesome, yeah, three man. times my body weight, well, nothing to I'm happy with it. <laughs> I love it, man. 
What what else is new? Do you have time to talk, or do you got to get going to your next client? Um, yeah, I got a few minutes. I can I can chat a little longer before I got to take off to my my client. So, yeah, nothing. Good stuff, man. What what else What else is new? What what are you what 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 are you, what are you learning with your nutrition, with your health, with with life? I'm just kind of I'm starting to take what I know now, and I'm trying to spread it to my other clients. My business is growing. And I'm getting more online clients, more people inquiring about what I'm doing. And I'm just spreading the good word, just telling people prioritize, you know, your red meats. You don't need carbs as much as you think you do. You got to get out of your own head and just kind of telling people prioritize these things and just watch how you feel like. And I'm just living proof of it. And that's just I'm mean, enjoying this whole process is just very enjoyable for me. Wow. Are, are are most of your clients like strict carnivore, or do you have some that are um, cut that that are kind of like halfway down that transition, and they're just prioritizing red meats, but they have a couple days where, you know, they go off? Or I would say it's a good mix. I have one of my guys who's a client of mine. He he kind of went in full carnivore because he saw what I did as inspiration, and he's like, I wanna I wanna be on that no juice plan like Mike. Like I want people to think I'm on steroids like Mike. Like and then he started talking about the carnivore diet. And, <laughs> and all that so he he's been rocking that and i have a few clients who they they are very hesitant to get off the sugar the carbs the things they enjoy but i've just been kind of telling them okay have these things if you want but i want you to prioritize your red meats start with the red meat your fatty red meat and go from there see how you feel good advice and i've had i've had clients report back to me saying they feel like they're 21 again you know they feel great you know, knee pain's gone away for the first time in years and stuff like that. So just slowly tipping the scales and I'm just leading from the front and the more, the more my clients follow is, and it keeps inspiring me too to kind of stay on this beaten path and just keep seeing what my body can do. Right on. Um, dude, personal question. Have I had a lisp while, while we've been talking? I don't believe so. Like, have you noticed anything? No. I told you I, I told you I chipped my tooth, right? You did mention that. Yeah, I didn't. I haven't noticed a lisp or anything. How did that happen? You were both on. You been on a bone or something? You said. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. And the re- and the reason I'm bringing this up is because this totally segues into what you were talking about. You're talking about how you're uh, wanting everybody to prioritize red meat. All right, so check this out. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 14. I call it the. I call it the, the Deuteronomy chapter 14 diet. <laughs> um, <laughs> like this is this is like a law. Yeah, this isn't like a law that we have to ab- that that we have to abide by uh, today, or at least I don't believe so. The, the, you know, the New, the New Testament pretty much um, you know uh, says, says 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 otherwise. But he's 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 uh, giving them Moses is giving the Israelites advice on uh, what to eat going into this promised land so that they can live well, so that they can prosper, and so that they can um, so that they can grow and flourish and be blessed in this new land. And uh, it's basically the lion diet. It doesn't. It, it it's 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 essentially what it is. Is your foundation is red meat from ruminant animals, just like just like the lion diet that you and I did. And then there's like some birds and some. So I think chicken is okay. I'm not really 100 percent sure. And then like some fish are okay. Um, but I don't know. I just thought it was kind of cool that that you're that that's like the diet that you're recommending, <laughs> um, yeah. and that it should be the foundation of your diet. But yeah, man. So check this out. So um, I am cooking bone broth for my daughter right and uh it's like our fa- it's like our favorite food um my wife isn't a huge fan of it my son isn't a huge fan of it that's all right my wife is like pretty much keto carnivore otherwise but uh just bone broth isn't really her, her thing so i respect that but my daughter and i love our bone broth man especially my daughter so yeah um the bones that we cooked were so soft man they were delicious like i mean they were seriously incredible like they, they were they were great and so like and so i was just eating them and i'm like i'm not gonna feed this to my kid i mean like that's you know that's that's definitely sketchy but i was like oh well we need to pray before the meal i don't know i get sick of saying the same prayers over and over again and so uh doing around me chapter 14 has kind of been on my heart kind of been on my heart lately so uh so so i so i prayed and on, on on verse three it says you must not eat any detestable thing <laughs> so i i literally said all right um lord i don't know if this is okay for me to be eating bones or not like you know like is, is it if, if this is a bad idea let me know all right yeah so uh about a minute later i, I feel a snap yeah oh. my tooth is gone bro it just snapped in half there it went <laughs> oh crap so not 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 only did uh, so not only was my question clearly answered, I think by God, <laughs> but then uh, if you keep reading, 
if you keep reading at verse 21, it says you are not to eat any carcass. I should have just oh. kept reading same chapter. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to answer my question. But yeah, man, so I got to figure out how to live without a tooth for the next couple months or whatever, I guess, <laughs> until, yeah, until I figure out what to do about it. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm counting my blessings. I got a whole bunch of other good teeth, right? So I'm thankful. Yeah, for yeah there's plenty of them. Plenty of them. Yeah. <laughs>